In this video, we're gonna do a pretty quick example of the divergence theorem. So let's recall what it says real quick. If we've got S, which is a piecewise smooth, outwardly oriented surface bounding a three-dimensional region E, and F is has continuous partials on a region that contains E, then we have this following equality of integrals. So we've got the surface integral on the left-hand side and then this triple integral over a solid region on the right-hand side. So the surface integral over the vector field F is the same thing as the triple integral of the divergence of the vector field. So the way you wanna think about this is we go from three integrals to two having this special derivative called the divergence annihilate one of the derivatives. So this is like some higher dimensional analog of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, the example we want to do is this one. So we want to find the surface integral of this vector field f, which is defined component-wise by x cubed over 3 plus yz squared plus x squared plus y cubed over 3 plus x cosine z comma z squared. Great. And then S, our surface, is a cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1, and then z goes from 0 to 2. Okay, so we can maybe draw a picture of that, although since this is a pretty simple um, surface, it doesn't really matter so much. Okay, so let's see. We've got some picture going like this. Great, so let's say this would be like our z equals 2 point, and then here we're going... Um, radius one. So let's get to it. We need to calculate the divergence of this vector field, but that's actually pretty easy. Let's recall that the divergence is equal to the partial with respect to x of p plus the partial with respect to y of q plus the partial with respect to z of r, where we're thinking like these are the component functions p, q, and r. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us uh, x squared and then plus y squared, and then finally plus 2z. Okay, so now we need to take this triple integral. So we'll have the triple integral over E, where E is now the solid region of this cylinder of this function right here. So we've got x squared plus y squared plus 2z dv. Now, since this is a cylinder, this is just screaming out for us to use cylindrical coordinates. So let's recall that means x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, z equals z, and then dv is going to be r uh, dz dr d theta. And then furthermore, it's pretty easy to see what the bounds of integration will be here. So notice our r value is going to go from 0 to 1, our theta value from 0 to 2 pi, and then our z value from 0 to 2. So we'll just introduce, introduce those as we get to it. So here we'll have uh, 0 to 2 pi, uh, 0 to 1, 0 to 2. So I'm doing z inside, r middle, and theta outside. And then we've got this x squared plus y squared, but we know x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared because it's r cosine, r sine. So that's pretty easy to see. And then we're going to have 2z. So we've got r squared plus 2z. And now this is going to be r dz dr d theta. All right, great. So we need to multiply that out a little bit. We've got the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 2, and now we've got r cubed plus 2rz, dz integral first, dr integral second, d theta integral last. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take that z antiderivative. So 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1, then the z antiderivative is going to give us um, r cubed z, and then plus r z squared, evaluate that from 0 to 2, and then dr d theta. Okay, so let's see what we get for that. I'll just write it down here, and then we'll move everything to the top. So plugging in 2 for z, we get 2 r cubed plus 4 r. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and bring that up and then we'll continue on. Okay, we left off at this point. We've got this integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1, 2r cubed plus 4r dr d theta. 
And now notice we've got a function of r times a function of theta. It's a trivial function of theta, but it still is a function of theta, which allows us to factor that into two single integrals. So this is a great trick, which happens a lot with cylindrical and spherical coordinates. When you've got a function of r times a function of theta, you can factor it into two separate integrals. Or in spherical cases, if you've got a function of rho, theta, and phi all multiplied to each other, you can factor it into three integrals. So here we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta times the integral from 0 to 1 of 2r cubed plus 4r dr. Now those are some end of calculus 1 integrals, so they're pretty straightforward. Here we get 2 pi for this first one, and now this is going to be 1 half r to the fourth um, plus 2r squared. We need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. Now plugging in one into this, we get half plus two, so that's five halves times two pi. That's gonna give, give us five pi. And that finishes this problem.